Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Cast. We are continuing the Korea China Invitational League. This is a nine game series between Bishop, a big fan favorite here uh, at Artosis Cast, and then a Xiao Giga, a very strong Chinese Protoss. Uh, you know, the score right now is 6 1 in Bishop's favor. Uh, Xiao Giga has been getting more aggressive, more cheesy, and it has not been working. I think actually his, his macro games were by far the most impressive that we've seen out of him. Uh, you know, I definitely, even that, that win he has from the DT rush, I don't value that anywhere near as much as a few of his losses where he actually showed that he could battle against Bishop pretty well, especially that Apocalypse game. Damn, what a nice game. Well, uh, either way, we continue forward. And uh, yeah, it's it's almost the end, right? Like a couple more games left. This is uh, game number eight. So eight and nine and we are done. Uh, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this series so far. Um, do let me know in the comments uh, if if you like this type of thing as well. I always I always like to hear like the kind of level to which people like stuff. You know, there's multiple things I take into consideration, like the amount of viewership a, a particular type of match gets or a player or, you know, uh, like just in general, like uh, what people are saying in the comments as, as what they like about it. And, you know, I take it all in consideration. So anyways, uh, it is appreciated if you leave a comment. Now, we're on Vermeer and... Shaogaga is actually going for a Nexus first. This is the first time we've seen this. You know, that's kind of surprising. Eight games and only, yeah, seven games in a row with no Nexus first. You know, like uh, some Protosses will go Nexus first more than half the time. Mini being chief amongst them, right? Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's such a po uh, popular build. So kind of surprising there. Uh, Bishop goes to the center. Is he cross spawn scouting? That's wild. That's weird. If he goes to the bottom left after this, there's zero counterplay. Uh, zero counterplay at that point, right? For for Nexus first. And is this a Nexus first? Is a Nexus first one gate? It looks that way. Let's see which way Bishop goes. Because if he goes to the right, he will have options to attack. If he goes south, he'll have zero options. He's going to the right. I know you guys are like, oh, he's going south. No, it's, excuse me, it's weird pathing. You have to get below this thing, right? Anyways, uh, yeah, it looks like going to scout Bishop last. There is Shaguga and Bishop going to scout second. So there is an option for a rush. Let's see if he does it. He starts a third Marine, so he's going. He's going. There's no way you would start that third Marine unless you were going to go attack. So he's going to have to... Yeah, he starts his third depot. He's going to pull a bunch of SCVs. Now, the best Protoss in the world, like Snow or Best or anyone, would not be able to hold this push. Okay, the Nexus is going to die. I just want you guys to, to come to terms with that. Okay? Um, it, it's about saving probes. Like you just, you have to save your workers. In fact, the workers are like slightly lower than they should be right now. He skipped something in there. Uh, the workers should be slightly higher than SCVs, I feel like. So that's that's a little bit weird. But anyways, the push is coming. The SCVs are coming. And in fact, that is a dedicated push. The fact that he drilled nine SCVs against one gate with the late second gate, you can actually send six. So he pulls up the ramp. He needs that goon though. Yeah, this base is 100% dead. He might just go and, and try to finish. That was a sick attack. He got a lot of damage. 20 damage down on that uh, Zod immediately. Uh, a little bit of screwed up AI. And the goon pops out. He doesn't quite get the surround. But the probes are actually going to drill on top of everything. So this actually gives some real play right now to Shaukaga. He's killing off a lot of Marines. He gets the Vulture. He gets a lot of the Marines. And this is this is down the ramp. So even if you're attack if you're attacking this from high ground, you're going to take half missed shots. But yeah, it looks like he's got so many SCVs to attack this uh, Nexus with. There's no way to save it. Uh. Okay, there's more play in this situation than it looks like. Sometimes people see this and just think Terran's ahead. Um, in this particular case. 
It really matters about getting the command center down. He's going to start the command center. I would I would probably put Terran slightly ahead, but it's actually not nearly as much as you would think. The worker count is very similar. We're about to have two gate range goon, which means you kind of have to go siege mode after your mines. And uh, what generally happens from this position... Oh, he's going to run two high health goons past. Yeah, that makes sense. More surface area to attack it. Uh, but what generally happens in this position is you break out and you double expand as Protoss. And it actually turns into a regular game more often than not. More often than not. Now, obviously not every time. Sometimes Protoss goes all in from here. You know, sometimes Terran tries to hit a follow-up timing attack, and that can be very strong. I would not be surprised if Bishop tries to go for a five factory here. That would make some sense. Oh, big, big, big mine hit. Oh, man. And these are these are ready to just pop. Even a siege tank hit. One siege tank hit there, two there, and it's all dead. Oh, well. Uh, that was that was like way overly greedy. That was way, way beyond what he should have done there. And he's got the range now. Uh, but yeah, like he should have three more dragons. Kind of kind of sad to see it go down like that. Anyways, uh, the goons are going to be able to kill us off. Another SCV slips in for a scout. Marines going up the ramp. <laughs> I mean, they never get anything at this point anyways. The Marines have no chance. He's not going to be able to kill a probe. It's, it's not possible. Uh, but yeah, that'll all get blocked. And Bishop is mining before you even get your Nexus down. So that's a little bit painful. Like I said before, it's... you normally see this go into double expand but i feel like he's already wasted some dragoons now he's throwing down his robo which is not necessarily bad but there's like this this gap where he wasn't able to get what he should have gotten <laughs> right he's just he's, he's not going to have the economy that that we kind of wanted for the recovery so runs into a mine there decides to turn around yeah he's going to send this probe up to take a third so he is going to take those three bases, and we're even on workers right now, just to throw that out there. Ah, I was going to say it's really weird that he went Academy, but I guess you can scan and figure out what your opponent's up to. Well, in this case, he has gone Siege, but it's going to be a Marine Medic play. Now, in the off chance he goes Reaver right away, this could turn into a victory for Shaoguga. And by the way, this, this build... Like, you can do this. He got the SCV scouts up, and he saw how late the Robo was, and then he just kind of calculates. He's like, I think I can actually hit. Because if your opponent doesn't go cannons or reavers against this, you can smash. Well, cannons... Well, okay. So, since you have siege tanks, cannons don't matter this time. Uh, but just bio in general. Reaver is the real hard counter to bio. So he's going up into five racks. There is going to be an observer on the way very shortly here. And between siege tanks and stim range marines. We actually don't see that blinking right now, so I don't know which upgrades he's going to have. A couple of vultures running around. Okay, he does start range. Range is actually more important than stim. Without range, you get kited endlessly, and the stims can only run forward to target, but then your medics are too slow to follow, so it's a real big problem. So range is actually number one. Uh, obviously, you want to have both, though. The Observer is coming down. I actually think Shao Guga has a really decent chance of winning this game. This doesn't feel quite correctly timed. Like, you need to move out before the, the Observer sees it. Because it takes 19 seconds to make the uh, support bay for Reavers. And then, obviously, you have to get a Reaver out, and maybe you need a shuttle. Okay, he's moving out just before Observer. Observer doesn't know yet, doesn't know yet, doesn't know yet. Sees a Marine. No, still doesn't know. Sees a tank moving. This is bad, guys. <laughs> now he knows. All right, goes underneath the Observer. So let's see, Shaogugo, how good your micro is here. He's got a lot of Dragoons. He needs to go up and hit. You can't let him get into Siege Mode. If you're in Siege Mode, it's done. Like, the bio will hold you off forever if you have Siege Mode on. Like, the bio will just absorb everything. Okay, so he's going around. Kind of a flank move. Picks off the reinforcement, so that's always a, a good, smart move to make. 
But this is such an entrenched position. He's definitely going to lose that. Oh, I think Shaoguga at this point. Yeah, it's it's looking pretty rough. Like, he, I don't think he's making the right choices here. Maybe he doesn't play against this very often. It's definitely a possibility. It's very rare to see something like this. All right, Siege Shank's going to try to wiggle up the ramp now. That is a lot of goons. <laughs> that is a lot of goons, but he's lost his natural base as well. More goons popping out. Uh-oh, the probe's being pulled. Just target those. Oh, my God. Could have been an insane target. Okay, it does get one target down of it. Like, so efficient. Unbelievably efficient. Just goon soup. Well, GG. So we're just going to go into game nine. Finish this series off, right? Uh, we're on Polypoid, replaying map one for the final map. And a probe scout coming out here, as you can see, already gateway, cybernetic score, an additional pylon. We are cross spawns. Bishop being up here looks like just a standard factory expansion probably going to be coming out of him. And yeah, you saw the probe coming from bottom right, so he just kind of assumes that that's where he is because it would be really weird otherwise. That would have been a, an extremely fast scout from bottom left. So I like that turn around. And he's going to find that there's not going to be a zealot on the way. So that's some good intel already, no doubt. Get in, see that range is upgrading. Chugaga getting up with his probe. He sees a single marine. No big intel there. Probe coming down. And yeah, he canceled out the range. So, oh, 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 oh. We're going to have some cheese. So, canceled out range to go for the faster Nexus. Two factory cross spawn. There's not going to be any range pressure. So, two factory is not that good, but it can be mixed in sometimes. And uh, like between that last game with the medics, Marines and medics, and now this game with the two factory, I think... Bishop has already shown his dominance, even though some of the games were good and close. Uh, he's really shown his dominance, only losing to a lack of detection in one game. Uh, you know, which is like kind of like literally anyone in the world can win if you have cloaked units, right? And your opponent doesn't have a way to see him. That happens to everyone occasionally. So I think he's kind of at this point trying out some more fringy builds, see how they work. Gets his bunker up, loads it. This bunker is very far forward. Anytime you see a bunker like this, Protoss players, know that Terran is hiding something. This is not where you put this if you have a command center. If you have a command center, this is back here, where the goons has have worse surface area to attack it, and it's closer for SCVs to repair. This is a bad location for it. So this is almost every time you see this, they're sneaking something and not a command center. Okay, looking over at this base, Robo on the way, Range on the way. You know, the two factory play is going for three siege shanks right now. He's going to want to get into speed and mines next, building as many marines as he can. He's cutting SCVs very, very all in. You can see his SCV count not high at all. So there's the speed. And he'll move out at the three tanks. That's like always the move out uh, if you're doing a two factory. Well, there are different two facts where you actually move out with one or two tanks. But never really more than three. There used to be a build where it was five. That went away completely. Haven't seen that in years. It just doesn't do anything. They have so much by the time you have five tanks. Okay. Here we go. Starts to come out. Okay. I think uh, Shaoguga has a good idea of what's happening. Observer on the way. Three gate. This is going to be rough. <laughs> it's a big army. Now, if Shaoguga holds... That's the thing is this gets hold, held more than you think and it's not holding this portion of the push this right now the odds of it going down and killing this nexus is are extremely high now he's building a bunch of pylons out here so like he's actually putting a lot of money into trying to defend this right these are kind of in the way you kind of have to stop and attack them it buys a little bit of time I'm trying to micro here with those dragoons the flanking vultures though going to force him back into one area very very good from bishop but yeah it basically against this if you can't hold it you got to run up your ramp and go shuttles like some people most people just go directly into reaver because your opponent cannot afford both missile turrets and a command center at home so the reaver keeps them honest although rain goes for like a four or five gate zealot dark templar plus 
zealot legs plus shuttle speed. It's crazy, but it actually works really well. Now, here comes uh, Shogugo's defense. He brings probes up as well. The probes are actually not a bad idea. They're tanking for him. They aren't dealing any damage, but they are actually keeping his dragoons alive. So he sacrifices a huge amount of his economy, which is actually okay here because he's getting up and he's killing things. And oh God, as long as that mine doesn't hit. You gotta get rid of that mine too. Oh my God, such good mine laying here from, uh, from Bishop. He does such a good job. This was like starting to go heavily towards Shaoguga. And now suddenly Bishop has killed a lot of them. Look at this. Two of these are super low. Gets another one. Gonna get another one. Great targeting. He's remembering their health and or clicking on them very quickly to see that. So very, very well done. Still microing heavily. Definitely out microing Shaoguga here. We still have a probe advantage here for our Protoss player. His, he has a couple goons that are still here, right? He's still doing something with them. Oh, no. Oh, he actually gets it with the mind drag. Okay, well, that's something. And now he has four goons. Hey, hold the phone. Hold the phone. Okay, he's making siege tanks. Dude, that's held. That's it. Pushes over. This is the only play is a vulture counterattack. <laughs> the only play is to try to kill probes. Well, you try to catch up. See, he's making SCVs again. He's going to be thinking about a command center. Uh, back when Two Factory was still considered a, a reasonable build in the matchup, and nowadays it's not because Protoss players have good micro, and again, there's so many ways to recover even if you lose your Nexus. And Protoss is all... Terran is always, like, way behind on workers and stuff after this. Look at this. Nine SCVs down. But, uh... I wanted to just mention, right? Like, I saw a sharp many years ago when two-factory was still somewhat common. Most people, when the two-factory fails, start making siege tanks. Siege tanks are incredibly expensive, and you have to turtle with them. What I saw sharp do once is he went up to, like, eight speed vultures. So it was cheaper. It maintained map control, and it was enough vultures that you couldn't fully counterattack with goons. Like, see, eight vultures doesn't do anything against seven goons. But... Let's say that you counterattack. Okay, the vultures come in and deal damage quicker than the goons to the, to the economy. Let's say you counterattack with only some. You attack with five. Well, they can kill two. Okay, well, we attack with four. Well, eight vultures against four dragoons is actually not so bad. You can you can make something happen there and pop out a couple more units and be fine, right? So, like, there's... I really liked that, and I feel like that should still be a, a counter play. Now, oh my god, this is not something I expected. Sorry. I totally missed what bishop was doing here he went into four tanks and then vulture again and he's just gonna push again surprised i am very surprised to see this he has siege mode this time can this work reaver is on the way but not there yet he has to be careful like four tanks and this many vultures will splatter that many goons okay he has a reaver he has a reaver there's no anti-air whatsoever Maybe he can do, like, a mine drag with a Zealot drop. One thing is for certain, he needs to attack with everything at once. All right, here we go. The Dragoons start to go forward. He drops out this Reaver. Gets an excellent, excellent hit. Going to go for a second one. Doesn't get it. Dropped it out a little bit early there. But going to push Dragoons forward to target down these tanks that got damaged. Oh, my God. Sick mine hit. Oh, my God. I think that it, it feels like a little bit tilted micro. Like, it just... His control is a little bit off here. So, Mike Green back. Ugh, he still has that shuttle. Another Reaver is coming. Making a few Zealots here to help out as well. Missile turret on the way, though. There... you No, you still have to do a lot here as Bishop. If this... If he kills this army, he wins still. You know? Like, you have to not only hold on against this army, you have to kill this Nexus to get it even. 72 supply to 45, so I'm still not losing hope here in Shalgaga. And, yeah, gets a couple good Reaver hits, it looks like. Kills off that Siege Tank. Clearing some mines. Okay, gets a couple Vultures there. That's what you want to see. And that's going to be that. GG, Shalgaga going to end up taking a second map finally here at the end. And that is going to mean that it is a 7-2 victory for Bishop. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the series. Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.